If you've stumbled upon this video, it's probably because you have a dream of creating your own enamel pin and you need a little bit of guidance on the design aspect. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm an illustrator and enamel pin fanatic. I've created so many over the years. Hang on, let me show you. Here's a close up of all the pins I've created over the years and you can check them all out on my website. I made my first pin in March of 2020 and since then I've gone on to make over 30 pins and I've learned a lot of lessons along the way. In this video I'm going to cover some of my top tips on designing enamel pins. There's so many videos you can find out there in terms of manufacturing and the process of creating an enamel pin. I will leave some of my favourite videos below from some of my friends. But if you're looking for tips on manufacturing and production, sadly you're not going to find it in this video. But look out for future videos, I will try and cover those topics. So designing your own pin, whether you're doing it yourself or getting a designer to do it for you, there are some top tips I think you need to to know before you start. My first tip for you is think as a collection. Now you might just be thinking, Emily, I just want to do one pin. Why are you telling me to think of this as a collection? But we all start with one pin and I will tell you now, you will get addicted to this. And before you know it, like me, you will have a full collection of pins. One thing I am so glad that I did from the very first pin was I decided how I wanted my collection to look. You want it so that in 10 years time, somebody who has collected all of your pins can instantly instantly recognise one of yours because they work together as a collection. You've built this sort of visual language when it comes to your pins. If you own an e-commerce store and you sell products already, you're probably already thinking of these things. When you create new products, you want them to look like yours. You'll have themes that run throughout your products and you kind of want that with your pins too. Even if you're doing very different collections every year of pins, having a visual language that runs through all of them will really, really help. So with my pins, one of the things I decided very early on was that I wanted to make gold plated pins. I personally just like the look of them. It feels very on brand for me and you'll notice I don't actually have that many colours that I use. One or two shades of pink and purple is all I use and that's because it fits my brand. I have many people tell me now that they can spot an Emily Harvey art pin from a mile off and that's because of this visual language that I have held all the way through. Now some of my favourite, favourite pin artists have this. I will leave a couple on screen of my favourite, favourite people who have wonderful visual languages when it comes to their pin collections. You can spot them a mile off. This can be down to fonts you use, the colours you use, the plating, the line thickness. Like just think about it when you're designing your pins or when you design the next one after your first one. Think how can you incorporate the elements you used in your first design so that they work beautifully together. My next top tip is actually a bit of a pet peeve. Is that is that something you say? It's my little ick that I have when it comes to pins. You can vary your line thickness on a pin. Shocker. <laughs> Sometimes I see people designing pins with very thick block chunky lines. Now if that's your style and like we said before if that's your visual language style going through your pins go for it. But if you're doing it because you don't know that you don't have to, <laughs> then you can stop. Now your line's thickness will vary depending on your pin size because at some point they're not going to be able to make the line if it's too thin. So chat with your manufacturer to see what's possible. So one of my pins that kind of explains this well is my mermaid pin. I've used a line thickness for the outer edge of the mermaid and the kind of main forms of the mermaid I've used a certain line thickness. But then inside of that to do finer details I have a thinner line. Now look at this mermaid pin that's on the screen. If I'd have used a thick line for all the details, the belly button, the nose, it would have been such an, it would not have looked good at all. So vary the line thickness on your pins. It adds interest. You can draw attention to the areas you want to with maybe thicker bolder lines and you could take attention away from areas um, with thinner lines. The next time you're designing a pin, just have a look. Are all your line thicknesses the same? You could probably make it a much more interesting pin by varying those line thicknesses. So the next tip I have comes down to your colour choices. Now, if you're new to the pin world, you might not realise Pantone is the colour choice <laughs> by manufacturers. So when you're designing your pins all nice with RGB and you're like, oh, this looks really nice. It might be when you send it to your manufacturer that it comes back and looks wildly different and it's because your colours have been converted to Pantone. So bear this in mind when you are designing. There are so many tools you can use online. Sadly, it's not as easy to use Pantone. It used to be free. If you had Photoshop, it was so easy to do. They've made it 
Uh, they've added some barriers in place. You can buy the physical Pantone swatch booklet things. You're talking maybe £200 to buy these. They are expensive, but maybe it's an investment if you're looking to do this long term, investing in one of those. I have friends that have been able to buy them secondhand on eBay, so have a look. There's also online tools that you can use. I will leave them linked below. You can try them for free, but they are subscription based. I have to say it's one of the positives of being limited with my colour palette. I know exactly which Pantone colours I use for all of my pins so I don't really need to worry <laughs> too much. What I found in my experience working with manufacturers are uh, they are really 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 helpful so you send across if you don't know what Pantone colours you want to use send across in RGB and say look I don't know can you help me like match this up they might send over what they suggest and you can have a look. You can definitely search Pantone colours and have a look at swatches online, but just be mindful. Probably the best way to do it is to have a physical Pantone swatch book. It's just gonna be the best way to do it. This is another tip which I didn't realise when I first started and it took until maybe two years into making pins that I experimented with screen printing. Now don't let it scare you, it definitely scared me, uh, but the first pin that I did with screen printing was my elephant pin and it came out wonderfully. I don't know how I would have done it without screen printing. So when it comes to enamel pins, colours on a pin kind of need to be broken up by your metal. I hope that makes sense. So where you've got, maybe you're doing a, a pin of a character with hair. To separate the maybe bright red of hair and the peach of skin tone, you would have metal that separates the two and then they would just fill it in. Now you might have details on your pin that you just can't get gold to fit around. So my example, like I said before, is my elephant pin. And I wanted a design going down the trunk and I really didn't have space to have these gold uh, borders around all the colours. So I was introduced to screen printing and now I use it on pretty much all of my pins. It is an extra cost, so work that into your into your budget. But essentially like screen printing a t-shirt, the design is is sort of printed over the top. It means that you don't have to do the, the little borders around everywhere and I, f I personally feel like it means you can get more details into your pins. I kind of wish I could go back to my early pins and rework them with screen printing because there's so many things I didn't put into the design because I didn't think it was possible, screen printing makes that possible. Again, talk to your manufacturer. If you have a design that feels too detailed, ask them about screen printing and see what's possible. My next top tip when it comes to designing enamel pins, print out your design. It might seem that on paper, a design that say you want it to be one inch is perfect like that sounds great until you see that in your hand there's been many times I've had a pin delivered and thought oh my gosh that's tiny or oh my gosh that's massive and it's because I haven't printed it out so I now make it a habit print out the design in a variety of sizes make sure that you're scaled 100% and have a look is detail lost at that size could I afford to make it just sort of half an inch bigger or is that now too big print out all of your designs. I like to create in collections and I like to display them on backing cards together. So printing them out and laying them on backing cards and testing them before I send them into production is a must. I just wouldn't do it without. And my last little top tip when it comes to designing enamel pins is don't just assume that your manufacturer is gonna understand your drawing. I've worked with my manufacturer for four years now. We've made 30 pins together and multiple Christmas decorations and sometimes Sometimes I get a bit complacent, is that the word? And I just assume that they're gonna understand. Oh, I haven't really explained that, but I've done 30 pins, so they'll understand that this is meant to be glitter. And sometimes I get, <laughs> I get like this, but then I forget that they deal with hundreds and hundreds of different artists every single day. I know that all my pins are the same and they use the same plating and do all the same thing. If I don't make it clear on every single drawing, it probably will get missed. And at Christmas this year, I made my fourth Christmas decoration. Now my Christmas decorations are all the same size. They use all the same colors, all the same glitter. But this year, the glitter was very, very, very wrong. And it's because I did not make it clear. So don't just assume that your manufacturers know. You have to spell out everything. Triple check 
everything before it goes into production. So there we go, those are a few of my top tips when it comes to designing your enamel pins. If you have any questions, I'm assuming you do, and I, I have so much more I can share when it comes to designing enamel pins. Please leave your questions below, maybe I'll do a follow-up video. I'm so excited to see your pins. Make sure you bookmark this video if you're not ready to make pins right now, but looking to do it in the future, come back to this video and watch these top tips. If any of these have helped you and you go on to make a pin, please comment below. I would love to see your pins and how you've used these tips. I'm so excited for you. If you wanna check out my enamel pins, like I said, I have so many in my shop. All the details are below. Thank you so much. And I will see you soon for another video. Bye guys.